Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about staging websites. So we're gonna talk about what is a staging website? What are some use cases for it? And then I guess most importantly, how to use it. So we're gonna get started and walk you through all of those things. All right, so as you know, every time that you see this video on YouTube, we always have the blog post where it's a written post of everything we talk about here in the video, we have it linked in the description. So go over to our blog and you can follow along there. Usually we have Divi tutorials where we have code snippets. Now we're not gonna have any of that, but still it's kind of nice to have a reference. All right, so we're introducing uh, what, is a, what is a staging site really? And this actually came up after the Divi performance update. There was a lot of talk about it and I talked about it a lot and I realized that, hey, I actually never really did a tutorial on staging websites, but yet I recommend them. So I was like, well, let's get this done. So we're actually creating a whole series here. Uh, last tutorial, we talked about how to disable auto updates. We're gonna talk about backups and the change log and all kind of stuff. All right, so anyway, let's get started. What is a staging website? Well, this is a copy of your live website. There's some terminology. Sometimes you'll say a production website, but we just, I, I like to say live website. Um, so anyway, staging website could be called a testing website or a development website, something like that, but we're gonna say staging. So anyway, it's a completely separate, isolated WordPress environment, but it's a copy of your live. And that's really what it is. It's just a copy of your live, right? So what's it used for? Testing, updates, things like that. So if you're working on some code and you're afraid that you're gonna mess up, you're gonna crash the site and get kicked out and you won't know what to do, then it's probably a good idea to create a staging site, test the code, and then if everything works, then, then you'll be happy and you'll be able to have peace of mind and go to the live site and do the same thing. And that's the same principle as updates. So like with this, the Divi 4.10 update, right? If people had been using a staging website, there wouldn't have really been the, uh, what was it? Like the stress, I guess, and the anger and everyone was upset. Oh, this broke my site and everything. Because following a staging site, none of that would have happened, right? Because you would have tested it and be like, okay, it's not quite ready. There's some things with this plug, you know, with this code or with my header or whatever it was or with this setting, you know, turning off certain settings. And you could be able to do that in the staging site. You could have went through and turned off, you know, dynamic CSS and, oh, that fixed the problem. Therefore, on my live site, you know, when I update, I'll make sure I turn off that setting. You know, it's things like that, that you don't have to roll back. You know when it's ready and you can have control over it. So anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but what is it used for? It's testing code, especially. Um, I use it a lot when, when we're adding new code, like we're changing something. And um, we're talking more like JavaScript and PHP, not not really CSS. I mean, CSS isn't going to break your site, I don't think. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but you know what I mean, more like that kind of code, especially PHP. All right. The other thing, like I've been saying, is updates, themes, and plugins, and, and WordPress. So the WordPress core, I mean, the WordPress core probably won't like crash your site, but it just depends. There's a lot of variables, but definitely when you see a plugin or a theme that has a major update, and what I mean by that is usually like Divi, for example, they use the 4.10, right? So, or 4.11, 4.12, those updates, you should use a staging site. Now, I don't really recommend them for like 4.10.1, 4.10.2, oh, 4.10.3 is out. You know, it's usually smaller updates. I'm talking about that, that like second level number there. And the same thing would apply for our plugins, our Divi plugins, I use that same system, you know, uh, 1.2, you know, 1.3 or 1.1.4, you know, you, you'll notice like when I have a small update or a big update, and in fact, for me, and for Elegant Themes, we release a blog post when there's one of those bigger updates. So I guess I could, if you want to say it that way, anytime you see the blog post, for me or for them or probably other people too, 
that's when you know create the staging site and test it first okay why is it so important well we kind of talked about it um, if your site is broken or cracked like you might not even know it you might have updated and you went on your merry way and two weeks later you come back and your site looks terrible and, and that's going to cause lots of like a chain effect you're going to be embarrassed for sure when your client calls you and says your site's not working or the client's site is not working. If you if, if this was on a client site, you're going to be really embarrassed and you're going to have some explaining to do because you're a professional. If you have client sites and you don't have staging, you know, go read the manual again. That's that's essential if you, if you're using yeah, if you're if you're a freelancer or an agency, that's part of your job. That you need to be using a staging site for updates for client sites. Otherwise, yeah, and that's when you can build into the maintenance plan. Okay, it's gonna save your reputa reputation. You know, clients start seeing stuff and you break their sites, and yeah, it's gonna ruin your reputation really quick. But not only with your clients or with your customers or potential customers because they can't find the product or service also with search engines you know they don't search engines don't like broken sites either and yeah why wouldn't you want peace of mind I know when I when I create a staging site and test an update and I check it out like I go through the pages and everything looks good hmm, I don't see any problems right that just makes me feel good I can go to bed and be like ah updated and there's no problems Otherwise, I'm like, man, I wonder, you know, did I check all 300 pages? <laughs> you know, because you, you're just going to have an uneasy feeling. And you should. So anyway, we've rambled enough about staging sites. Let's talk about how to create one. And if you know me at all, you know that I am opinionated about website hosting. <laughs> the easiest method to create a staging site is with your hosting provider. And I will get a little blunt here. I'll just warn you. But that is the easiest way. Go into your hosting provider, log into your account, and look for the staging feature. It's usually one click, create a staging, or yeah, create a staging copy, you know, push or pull to live, whatever the terminology is. And it's right, it's right there. It's right built into your server, into your account. You know, you're paying for it. Um, I guess some hosts might have it as like an add-on, like another monthly fee add-on. So I have this headline here. It's probably controversial, and I don't really care because I don't think it's controversial. I say all good hosting companies have a staging feature. And you may say, well, my hosting company doesn't have a staging feature. That's not true. All good hosting companies have a staging feature. Yeah. All good hosting keyword there if your hosting company doesn't then they probably don't also have backups and they probably also make you pay like a crazy price for an SSL certificate I'm just saying there's a lot of things that tend to go together with a bad host and I would just say you know switch yeah that's what I would say I have a link here to hosting providers <laughs> anyway so really, the step is go into your hosting account, locate the host, the staging feature. And if you can't find it, go to their documentation, search for it, you know, get on their support or whatever. Yeah, it's probably, it's probably easy to find, but um, yeah, check that out and get familiar with it. Kind of get familiar with, read over their documentation and get familiar with like their terminology. Because I'm going to walk you through SiteGround and Cloudways, and their terminology is totally different. I mean, they mean the same thing. Um, but just get familiar with it, and that is my recommendation. So I'm going to walk you through those a little bit. But I wanna, I'm want i going to jump ahead just a little bit here. The, the second method would be using a plugin. So if, if, you're, if your hosting company doesn't, and you like your bad hosting company, you can use a plugin and when you go to the WordPress repository and you search for staging you're going to get a lot of like duplication migrating cloning that kind of terminology you're going to start seeing a lot of that because if you really think about it that's they're all pretty similar Cl cloning a site migrating it 
copying it, all those things, creating a staging, they're, they're kind of similar. They're slightly different, but you're going to find a lot of plugins. But one that it will probably come up is called WP Staging. And with a, with a name like that, you, you, it better be good, right? <laughs> WP Staging. So they call it Backup, Duplicator, and Migration. But yet, in their name, of course, it's staging. So anyway, that will probably come up. And from what I understand, that's a really good option. And there's other ones that are really good as well. Basically, the one click, you create a staging copy, you log into your main site, click the link, and it will log you into your staging copy. And there's going to be a differentiation there. But the key thing with those is a lot of times you won't be able to go from staging to live. Let's, let's say you update all your themes and plugins and you, you're testing kind of a bunch of crazy code and you're like, now I'm ready to put it in my live site. They're not going to have a feature that automatically puts it back into your live. You're going to have to manually do that. You're going to have to go back and do the exact same process over again. And you know what? That may be fine. In fact, even with a hosting provider that has staging to live, yeah, it may be such a small change that you're just more comfortable doing. I do that. I'll test an update and be like, well, it looks fine. I'll just go into my live and, and update. The other option is just using the staging both directions. You don't have to, but it's kind of nice. So anyway, go check that out. Um, again, from what I understand, it's pretty easy. They have videos and documentation on that and other plugins as well. So anyway... I have SiteGround and Cloudways on my list of recommended hosts, so we're going to stick with them. And I'm going to try to do this really quick because quick, I'm not going to show you every step. Here's the guide for SiteGround, okay? And then I have the same link, a guide to the Cloudways one. I really don't want to walk you through this because it's going to be... It's, it's just... You know, I'm going to make a test site and all that. But here's all a bunch of links. Once you come to this main, like how to use SiteGround staging tool, then you're going to do this, how to access it. You can go here. Here's how to create a copy of your site. And it's giving you all these little important things. Very good. So let's just do it really quick. I'm going to log in here. So I'm just going in here to a temporary site that I have. So you click on... Uh, WordPress and it's actually under the WordPress menu for right now and you have it for this so if I you know the the, the site that I'm on here is going to be in the drop down that'll be the only option but create a staging so like um, you know name it something clever like staging site and then click create it's going to do a little thing okay confirm that but it's going to put it right here in this list it's going to say staging copies all right, here we are. So it came up as a list. It's saying it's created, right? So then down here, I can log into it. So I could click that. I'm going to go into WordPress, and I'm going to do all my testing and make my changes and all of that. So that, at that point, then the staging site would be, the files would be different than the live. Do you understand? So if I want to take those edited different files and now I want those to be live I have a couple options I could like I said I could just go back and replicate the steps or when you click this little menu here full deploy meaning it's gonna just take everything it's gonna take that staging site and it's gonna completely push that thing to live anything you've done in staging it's just gonna be live it's gonna overwrite live with staging depends what you're doing that may be fine <laughs> Yeah, it may be fine, but custom is probably what you're going to want. You click on that, and I haven't actually done any changes, actually. So it's going to give you a list of things to be deleted and to be skipped. Now, there, it's what it's when you do the the custom deploy. It's going to figure out. It's smart enough to know what what has changed, and it's going to just change those you'll be able to use those check marks to actually narrow it down. Um, but that's it. You, you, you move it to live and the process is done. So think of it as you have your live site. I want to do an update, major update here. I want to test this crazy code. Copy it. Test the code on the staging. Looks good. Either go back to live and do that again or, or deploy it or push it or pull it, whatever the terminology is back. Okay, that's about as simple as it gets. Uh, over in Cloudways, login here. 
same step. We go to applications here. We could see, we could go to like our menu, like right here. Clone app, create staging. Um, or if we're in this area, oh, if we're in our server, then we go down here. You can see if I click on like one of these sites, then the options are right here. Clone, create staging. So once you're doing that, I, I'll go to my staging now. Go to my applications. So right here is the one that I have, that I've made. Access details would be the same, but you can you can change all of that. But this tab here, staging management, here you can see there's push and pull. So copy data from staging to live. is push and copy from live to staging is pull. So do, kind of get confused sometimes on the push and pull thing. So just read this, like every time I come in here, I'm like, yeah, okay, from live to stay, like I wanna make sure I'm doing the right thing, right? So if you were to click on push, then you'll get options. So watch this, if I click on this, I can choose web application files or database or you know full or selected. I mean, it really gets narrowed down, right? You can really narrow it down. Um, and then this option here is very good. Yes, please take a backup first because whew, depends what you're doing, I'm moving a lot of stuff around. Um, so that's that, I'm gonna cancel that. But if I was pulling from live to staging, um, a lot of times I'll just do everything like that, full overwrite of application files and database and then proceed and it takes a little. Um, but yeah, if I knew I only wanted certain things, I could do that and then I could click on incremental, then I could exclude and then I could type in the folder um, or the database, same thing here, selected tables, it's gonna load those. It gives you some options, and I really, really highly recommend going here to this guide, how to create a staging, and going through their, their guide, because it's gonna be so much more technical and, and explained much better, and I don't wanna lead you astray. Just be careful if you're doing a lot of database changes and things like that. You gotta remember, like, if you have a WooCommerce store, you don't wanna, you don't wanna copy it to staging and then move all, you, like three weeks later, you move from staging back to live, and then you're like, oh crap, I had three works, weeks worth of orders that got messed up, or I have a course, you know, using like LearnDash or something, and then all those students got messed up on their progress. You gotta be careful with that kind of thing. Um, but for most of you, it's really just a matter of copying it to staging, making your changes and then putting it back, deploying it back or just going back. I know this got long and I, I didn't necessarily show you like exactly step by step by step, but I hope that now you have this like, just this big picture understanding of staging and when to use it and why to use it. So we're actually doing a little bit of a series here. I thought of it after the kind of whole process of updating to 4.10 a lot of people had questions what is staging how do i make a backup you know how do i roll back my site where's the change log how can i access that what about my auto updates were turned on things like that so i'm creating a whole series if you have a good idea that goes along with that let me know and probably by the time a lot of you are watching this those will already be out so check youtube here and the blog all right so if you're new to here, we do tutorials every week. Usually it's something involving code, you know, something to the menu or the blog or the blurb or some kind of crazy fun hack that we do in Divi. So if you're interested in that, then be sure to subscribe. And if you found this at all helpful, if any of this information about staging was new to you and it was you felt that it was, was good, then give me a thumbs up. That really helps me. Um, anyway, We'll see you all in our next video next week.